Hello, everybody, and welcome to the study session for Ayurveda Meets Essential Oils. In this particular video, I'd like to set a larger context. Um, and what I mean by that is really to set up a classification system that Ayurveda has laid out so that when we get into the nitty gritty granular part of studying, which is unpacking oil after oil, we actually have this context and this classification system that we can drop the oils into for easier study and to learn how to use the oil. But even putting that into a context, I'd like to talk about the genesis of Ayurveda and the great sages. The great sages, they look out into the material world, out into their universe, and they notice, of course, they notice that we individually as humans have a body, but nature also has a body. <clears throat> the universe has a body. I'm going to call it the universal body. And what they notice amongst many things that the predominant forces of nature's body are wind, sun or heat, and water. We can also say moon, right? So these three forces amongst all the other forces of nature's body really stick out to them and are responsible for the dynamism of nature's uh, body and also responsible for whether nature's body seems like it's flowing and moving easily or if nature's body is in dis-ease. Well, what does that mean when nature's body, when the universal body is in disease? What is a, a, a disease of wind? Well, the disease of wind would be horrible windstorms, hurricanes, tornadoes, a disease of heat or excess heat or sun. We have drought. Nowadays, we can say climate change, uh, brush fires, for example. And a disease of water would be, of course, a flooding. Now, these forces of wind, sun, and water, that's what we call them in the universal body. When we refer to them in our own body, they simply change names. So wind becomes vata inside the body, sun becomes pitta inside, and water then becomes kapha inside the body. So we know that the universal body is absolutely going to affect our individual body. So what we do to, um, to bring ourselves into maximum health and optimal well-being is to always look inside to see what's going on with our bodies in relation to the universal body, right? When the universal body changes, for example, when there's a transition in season, we need to look inside and be like, oh, how can I adjust that? How can I calibrate so that I am in sync and always living in alignment and in balance with, uh, with the universal body? Now, there is yet another way, uh, uh, like I said, another context that I can put around that to get even more specific, that when the Ayurveda sages uh, look out into the universal body, they also begin to describe the universe. They have 20, I'm calling them gunas, well, they're calling them gunas. Uh, we can also say that there are 20 adjectives or descriptors to describe, to have a vocabulary to describe what's going on in nature's bodies. So um, these handouts are going to really help you. I have these, my assistant Sarah um, put these in a post. You can look for them. This is one of them called the gunas and the elements and the doshas. And then the second one, there've only been two so far. Uh, almost the same thing in a table form. Hello, in a table form. So uh, it's not far from this particular post. So just um, either have them open digitally on your computer or you can print them out hard copy, old school, like me, I love a hard copy. So 20 gunas or 20 adjectives or 20 descriptors of material nature here in the left column of this particular sheet. We can also, also call them um, 10 pairs of opposites, right? So they're not random. They're just not going all over the place. They're actually listed on a spectrum. So we have cold and hot, oily and dry, heavy and light, gross, subtle, dense and liquid, soft, hard, static, mobile, sticky. Uh, we also sometimes in Ayurveda call sticky cloudy. So sticky or cloudy and clear. Slimy is another variation of oily. Slimy and rough and slow and sharp. Okay, so with these 20 gunas, we can do a lot. 
we don't even have to, you don't have to, it's not rocket science. You don't even have to know right now about the elements and the doshas, just working with the gunas. Uh, also, if any of you have studied some yoga, which I think many of you have, you may, uh, the word guna may be familiar to you in the study of the three gunas, right? Uh, which are rasa, uh, something that's rasa, uh, rasa, rajasic, sorry, not rasa, rajas, tamas, tamas, tamasic, and sattva. Ayurveda is not satisfied with that. They need a little bit more specificity. While those three energies are located also in these 20 gunas, that's the, those three gunas are sort of shorthand, Ayurveda wants to get more specific. When you go to an Ayurvedic doctor for a, an examination, they're always, even though they may use the language of dosha, they're always going to go to the specificity of the gunas as they're making their observations. Is the tongue dry? The tongue looks a little bit dry. The skin looks a little guna dull. There's a sort of cloudiness in the eyes, perhaps. Okay? So, these gunas are also super important when we take this axiom, this very simple axiom of Ayurveda, into consideration. Like begets like, opposites will balance. What does that mean? Like begets like means that if you have a guna and you add more of that specific guna, you're going to get more of that guna. That's like a big duh, right? So if you have, um, there will be a quantitative increase in that particular adjective guna, that quality, when you add more of it. Example, um, let's say I am someone who has a lot of fire in their system, right? Jumping ahead, I can say like, okay, I have a lot of pitta. I am a pitta constitution. But for the sake of keeping it with Nagunas, I, I am born with just a lot of fire in my constitution. And it happens to be summertime, which it is actually right now for where I am. So it's summertime. That's pitta time of year, right? It's the hottest time of year. So I'm already, already adding the summertime environment onto someone who has fire in their constitution. That's already a red flag that we can go out of balance with the fire. Then, let's say for dinner, I'm having food that is heavily seasoned, heavily spiced with cayenne pepper and red pepper flakes and all kinds of peppery and spicy things. That's even more guna hot added to the mix, right? So we have all those three added together. We can go easily out of balance because like begets like. Now, the opposites balance. I'll give you an example from my own self, my own body. Uh, I am very, very dry, right? That's part of my, I was born that way, dry. I just, I just came out of the womb dry. There was no liquid at all. Now, I, <laughs> I, I have a dry constitution. My skin is always rough, guna rough. My skin is always guna dry. Um, I could not wash my hair for two weeks and there would be no oil in my hair. So, um, and also I am prone to constipation, a little bit TMI, too much information. But the reason why I'm prone to constipation, because even my inner organs, my digestive organs, especially the colon, have a tendency to be, de uh, to dehydrate, which causes constipation. So knowing this about myself, what do I do? Well, I introduce things like body treatments or food or drink that is going to be the opposite of dry to balance myself out. I put oil on my body every single day. I put oil in my hair every single day and I take oil, either coconut oil or flax or avocado oil every day to lubricate my viscera, to, to lubricate uh, my digestive organs so things are just flowing very, very easily. Like begets like, opposites will balance. It's as easy as that. So we will learn in the future that we can also put the oils in some of these guna categories. But to be very, very honest, um, not every guna is used in classifying oil. The, the gunas that are predominantly used for classification, cold and hot used a lot, heavy and light are used a lot. Let's go to the, uh, the second column, the middle column here, and we have the five elements, space, air, fire, water, earth. Space, air, fire, water, 
earth. Please memorize these in that order because they are not random either. Space, air, water, fire, earth. When I say that they're not random, they are listed in an order from the most ethereal ether, which is space, uh, the most ethereal transcendent, the most subtle, let's say, moving down in varying degrees of condensation all the way down to earth, right? Air is a little bit, has a little bit more substance. It's a little grosser than, than space. That's where we get wind, right? So Ayurveda puts air and space together in almost all their classifications because wind is air moving through space. And certainly fire is a little grosser, a little more substantial than, than, uh, than air. And then we keep going down. I think it was Albert Einstein who said, oh, I hope I'm not mangling this. I'm paraphrasing. He said that um, uh, matter is energy reduced down to visibility, right? Remember, we're, th this is all one energy from a tantric perspective, right? It's all one. So um, the ground, the earth, is really just the sky condensed. Now, so it's important to know these just in terms of their, um, uh, their order. Now, this really nice um, guna column here with all those descriptors, they're going to break out of their column and they're going to start describing the elements, right? So um, we can say that space and air have the gunas, have the qualities of cold, dry, light, mobile, and subtle. Fire has the gunas under it of hot, light, also mobile, and sharp. And then water and earth, we'll put those together. The heavier gunas for the heavier element, cold, wet, heavy, dense, soft. So I think that's pretty um, obvious. Now, um, self-explanatory, I meant to say. Now, the, uh, the doshas are the elements. So when you hear dosha, any of these doshas, like I said earlier, vata, pitta, and kapha, you can think the elements. It's, all, it's shorthand for the elements. So vata is really the elements of space and air together. Pitta is fire and a little bit of water. And kapha is mostly water and some earth. Now, to be quite honest with you, when we're categorizing the gunas and we put them in the categories of, uh, when we're, I'm sorry, when we're categories, categorizing the oils and we put them, let's say, in the gunas and the elements and the, uh, the doshas, it's important to know that we have some allowance different than just eating. When you ingest something, and I'm not saying we ingest oils. In fact, I hardly ever ingest oils. But when we're talking about food, for example, um, that's going to have much dramatic, more dramatic effect on our doshas, on the gunas, than breathing something in. It's not that breathing aroma isn't powerful because it absolutely is. But what I'm trying to say is that the oils are tridoshic, right? Um, let's go back to the gunas for a second. Uh, you can start even looking at food and without even knowing too much, now going to some website to tell you what or what not to eat according to dosha, you look at something, let's take a fruit uh, called an avocado. I believe it's a fruit. Um, avocado Think of the gunas of an avocado. You can look at your list in the gunas. And when I look at the list and I look at an avocado, I see dense, heavy, oily, smooth. Now, what are those the gunas of? Those are the gunas of water and earth. They're also the gunas of kapha. So we can say from a dietary point of view that People who are kapha, people who have more water and earth in their constitution, might want to stay away from avocado. Why is that? Well, like begets like. If you're adding more of the gunas of an avocado onto someone who has those gunas already inherently in their system, constitutionally, we can move out of balance. So we would want kaphas to eat food that is a little more astringent, 
a little more drying. It's the opposite and light, like popcorn, <laughs> for example. Um, so all that to say that if you are kapha, I'm using kapha as an example, and you put in your diffuser patchouli, which is a kapha oil. It's very dense. It's very heavy. It's very grounding. Um, you're going to be okay. You're not going to die. If you're kapha and you breathe in the aroma of an oil that's, that's, uh, that has those gunas of, of kapha. Now, I will say that it would be more uh, beneficial for someone who has a lot of vata in their system. This guy right here, right? Because I long for that heaviness and that grounding and that earthiness. We, all doshas will want that. So that's why I mean that they can be tridoshic and, um, and to not to worry if we kind of mess it up a little bit. So it's just a framework from which we can study and use these oils. I hope this um, initial talk is beneficial and educational for you. Thank you for joining me. And if you have any questions at all, please write them down in the comments. I will answer as much as I can. And have a great day. Thanks for joining.